Mm, buongiorno. Uh, good morning, everybody. I haven't had uh, enough time to study Italian, so I'm, I'm going to speak in English today. Uh, my name is Pravda Yoon. I'm, um, I'm here in Italy at this time to do a small book tour uh, with my book here, published by Ad Editor. And um, I, I think I should start by telling a little bit about my background. I, um, I studied art in the US. Uh, I graduated from a school called the Cooper Union, um, mainly studying graphic design, but also uh, doing experimental film making and fine art, I mean, uh, painting and sculpture. Um, but before I went to the U.S., I, I mean, I'm from Thailand, I was born in Thailand. I was in Thailand for um, about 14 or 15 years, and then I left Thailand to study in the U.S. <clears throat> before leaving Thailand, I had already started to write, so I, um, I guess my, my very first passion was writing and reading. Um, I started to write short stories when I was about around 12 uh, and had sent my stories to magazines and were published. Um, I had a couple of stories published when I, before I left for, for the state. So I had been writing, I guess, the longest in terms of uh, creative work, but it wasn't, it was never anything nearly professional, it was just a, a hobby. Um, so when, when I was in the States, I didn't have any time to, to write uh, short stories anymore in Thai, um, but then when I went back to Bangkok in 1998, I, I started to write again um, <clears throat> and so basically I studied art but I what I did most after coming back to Bangkok was was writing um, I had written a lot of short stories in the beginning <clears throat> um, and those short stories were collected into book uh, book form and and this is actually this book is actually a collection of my early stories so these stories were published mm, in like 99 or 2000 <coughs> and um, I received an award uh, in in Thailand which is uh, the biggest award there for literature it's called the Sea Wright Award um, for this, for the stories in this collection, uh, so one thing led to another. I, I, people knew me as a writer from that award, and I just, from then on, I had been writing since. But because I love to do other things, also um, my favorite thing to do is to design book covers. And I had been doing that also ever since I was in the in the states. So when my first book was to be published, um, the the publisher in Thailand asked me uh, what kind of cover I wanted or who I who the designer I wanted to to be um, the person designing my my book. I said me, of course. Um, so I <coughs> proposed that I would design my, the whole book that, that I was uh, writing also, and they somehow trusted me to do that. So I was able to design pretty much all of my, my own covers since the beginning. <coughs> um, and then uh, people started to ask me to design their covers, and also uh, publishers uh, asked me to design many other covers also. Uh, as, as 
well as to translate uh, books. So I, from writing, I started to translate. I translated some um, Western classics. Oh, I guess this. Oh, this is. I chose this because of the name of this school. <laughs> is is the cover design for the Catcher in the Rye um, that I also translated. Uh, the, this is not the first one that I designed. This is the, I think, maybe third or fourth edition of this translation. Uh, but it's the one I like the most, so I'm, I'm, I'm showing this one. Um, uh, I, dis I translated all of J.D.'s Challengers, uh, Salinger's books into Thai. Uh, this is the Catch in the Rye, and people have asked me what I, how I translated the title from English to Thai, because it's quite difficult. Um, even in English, uh, people don't really know what it means, because it's, it's actually from a, a poem that is in the book actually also a misquoted poem. Uh, so it has a kind of poetic um, sensibility to, the, to it. So in Thai, I try to keep that um, sense of poetry in the title. So I translated it into something that, uh, trying to be close to the original, so, but it's not obviously the same. Uh, so in Thai is kind of like, I will try to be the person who catches people from falling, basically. <coughs> um, yeah, so maybe we go to the, the next cover. This is the most recent um, cover for the Catcher in the Rye. Uh, I don't know if it's practiced here in Italy or not, but in, in Thailand, people tend to get bored easily. <laughs> so every time there is a reprint of the same book, uh, we, we t there is a tendency to change the design of the cover just to make it seem fresh or maybe to some people who've never seen it before they will you know be attracted to a different cover or something like that um, yeah so this is the latest one um, this is also Salinger is from nine stories uh, this is to go as a set with the first one, the catcher and the rye, uh, the one that I just showed you. And there was also um, the other books by Salinger in one set as well, but I don't have it all here. Um, I tend to, uh, this is not typical of a book cover design in Thailand because is quite abstract, and I think generally um, there is a myth, I think, uh, that publishers in Thailand believe that the readers uh, like things that are easy to understand. So, um, for example, illustrations um, of uh, characters or, or something that is recognizable um, immediately on the cover, but uh, personally I, I like designs that are more abstract because I feel that um, I don't really want to give the readers specific images of the story because that is only somebody's interpretation and every time that you read a book, I think every reader is his or her own in interpretation of the story. So I, I don't like to see faces on, on book covers, uh, faces that you know, somehow you have, you associate with the character in the book and it may not be the right uh, character or face for you as you're reading it. So I try to interpret 
the narratives and the stories in an abstract way. Um, like the, for the catcher in the rye, can you go back? I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you've all read the book, but it's really hard to come up with with uh, an image, just one image for this story, because um, the story is about many things, and there are so many events in in the story uh, that are almost equally important, and. And I think Salinger himself made a point of um, demanding that his covers were just plain, you know, like in, in, in the American edition, it's just white with, uh, with the title. Um, but originally, when it came out in the 50s, I think the first cover was an illustration of a merry-go-round. And uh, even that doesn't really seem to to express the content of the book that well. So I chose a kind of abstraction that um, is symbolic uh, to to try to translate the sense of fragments um, from in the story and also kind of light shining through in the city of New York. Uh, there is a sense of jazz composition in there, um, which is also, I, I took a different direction for the next, for the newer one. Yeah, this one, um, if you recall, if you've read the book, if you recall, there is uh, one part about a record, a vinyl uh, music, a record that he wants to give to his sister and is broken in the end. So I try to capture that that brokenness in 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 the story, and also you know signs in the city of New York and things like that. <clears throat> so every time I design a book cover, I I try to find. Um, a way to to express what's in the book through abstraction rather than something obvious. <coughs> uh, I also translated Lolita, and um, of course I was also asked to design the cover for it. Uh, <coughs> this is actually a second second one. Already, I couldn't find the first one. I'm sorry, but um, is Lolita most most of the covers that we find are of some kind of sexy young girl uh, because people tend to think that the book is about a middle-aged man who is obsessed with a um, you know a young twelve-year-old girl. Um, and that's the whole story, but it's not. If you've read the, the story, it's really not, almost nothing sexual or erotic about it at all. It's, it's more even a disturbing story about a very disturbed man who is always uh, having a kind of breakdown. And is, the, his obsession is destroying him throughout, throughout the story. But it's also a story about a road trip. I mean, it's, it's kind of a story about America in that sense that because uh, Humbert Humbert, the main character in the story, takes Lolita across, across uh, country driving to escape, uh, you know, to prolong this, this space of being together with this girl that he loves. Um, so I try to depict both the sense of uh, America in the 50s through those, um, the typography. Uh, there's a lollipop there, there's a kind of a barbershop sign in, within the stripes. Um, but also the sort of mountainscape uh, in, in, the, in the abstraction in the back. Uh, at the same time, there is, there is some eroticism, a kind of um, 
strange eroticism in the story. So I, I tried to depict that through the, uh, the hills that sort of looks like uh, somebody's having a hard on in, in, in the pants. Um, yeah, so it takes, some t it, it takes a little bit to, to look at these covers and, and try to find like little details in there. But, but I, uh, is my direction is to, to make things uh, abstract from things that are solid. So it's, it's, there's always some kind of interpretation or story in, in the design. It's not just pure composition or colors. Uh, this is another Nabokov story, Pnin, that I translated. Um, and this was the last book I translated. It, was, it came out last year. After having translated two Nabokov novels, I've decided that I'm going to take a break from, <laughs> from translation because it was so hard and um, so painful at times. Uh, but I really like this, this design, especially because uh, in a way, it's very typical when somebody is designing a book cover for a, a Russian author because you, people tend to want to use the suprematist um, direction in the design. Um, but I, I think I try to make it more humorous because the story is also a comedy. It's a tragic comedy, but but um, it's a lot more, it's funnier than most of uh, Nabokov's stories. And so I try to, uh, to make the composition recognizable as Russian deconstruction, but also um, not, so, not in such a serious way. I mean, there, there are like some smiley faces in the back, and, and things are kind of twisted um, uh, to, to experiment with typography and all that. So, um, this one is another, I didn't translate this, but it's a cover for another translation from Czech, a uh, Czech um, author. Uh, called Habrao, Habrao, and is from the book Too Loud a Solitude. Um, again, it's very graphic design, um, very sort of typical of um, modernist uh, design direction, but, but there is also something from the story because uh, the story is about a guy who his duty is to destroy uh, books in this with this huge machine, um, and and the buttons is the you know the stop and the on but button that he uses on this machine. Um, and if you've read the story, you know that the whole thing is about him and the dilemma of of this destruction. Um, I also, I have a small publishing house um, called Typhoon Books and we publish uh, Thai literature but also some classic translation and Animal Farm is one of our uh, books that we've, we've published and is maybe one of our most successful as well. Uh, and I also designed this cover. Uh, I enjoy this because it gave me an opportunity to, to do illustration because I also would like to, to draw. Um, and I didn't want to make it um, so retro because sometimes when people um, design for books that are classics, they tend to go for you know, a very retro direction where you try to make it feel like something from, from that period. But uh, I wanted to make it more fun and, 
uh, more contemporary. So I, I, I thought of it as a kind of comic, a comic book uh, with the, using the characters in the story as uh, on the cover. Um, yeah. This one is also a translation from Anaïsnin's Delta of Venus. Uh, is published by one of the uh, another publishing house in Thailand, and um, this one was also difficult because the obvious, I mean, it's known as a, an erotic classic, uh, so the obvious choice would be to, I don't know, to 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 show photography of women's skin or something like that. But I, again, I try to use abstraction um, to convey the sense of eroticism and also body parts and um, the experimentation in, in the story rather than to use something very obvious. Uh, another translation. This one is from the book called Flowers for Miss, Mrs. Harris. Um, I think, I don't know if it's a classic here, but in, in, in Thailand, people know it as a, as a classic as well. Um, usually, the, the cover used to be uh, illustration of some you know, old, old French woman. But um, I also try to make this, to update it to something more modern and contemporary and something uh, catchy uh, rather than to tell people right away what the book is about. Okay, so those are just some of the examples of uh, the covers I've designed. Um, so I write, I design book covers. I also design some other things as well, like logos and um, uh, typography. I've, I've designed some, some typefaces. Um, but I also, uh, I've also produced music. Uh, this is not something I do very often, but, but for my first novel, I had this idea that it would be good to have a kind of soundtrack to go with the book. Um, the book was sci-fi, so I asked, um, at the time, a very new independent uh, music label in Thailand to work, to collaborate on, on a music album to go with the novel. So it, it was the first time that a novel had a soundtrack to it in Thailand, so it generated some kind of excitement and I was really happy to be able to work with this team because they were at the time very exciting um, label. So I will play one of the songs that I wrote for you. <coughs> well, there is also a music video. A, a, a little bit embarrassing because I'm also in it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my boy. What do you say? 
<laughs> Thank you. So strange to see. I mean, it's quite old. Um, I think this was made in 2001 or two or something like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> a little bit embarrassing. But uh, I, this, this song is called Lok Meche Kong Rao, which uh, translates to The World Is Not Ours. Um, it, it was uh, quite well received. I mean, the, the whole, the, the album as well as this song, uh, the song made it to like number one on radio uh, for a little while. And the, f the phrase itself, uh, the world is not ours, has become a kind of cast phrase for people to use when there is some, for example, at, at the moment, there is a, a issue in Thailand involving an art center in the center of Bangkok. Um, the art center is, is associated with the city of Bangkok, but it's also it has a foundation that runs it also. But now it seems like the the, bank, the city wants to claim it and take over, and so the artists are protesting this uh, is going on right now as we speak. And I see on Facebook uh, feed people using this phrase, you know, like changing the world is not ours to the art center is not ours. So <laughs> it's kind of uh, still going on in, in, the, in the culture. Um, but music is something I, I like very much, but because I don't play any instrument and I don't have the knowledge to compose my own songs, I always have to collaborate with, with, uh, with other people. But it's something I enjoy very much, this collaboration, because I get to um, you know, have something like this, or write lyrics, which I love to do also. Uh, I don't, I don't write poetry so much. Sometimes I do when I get, you know, the an idea or something. But um, it's I find it easier and more fun to write lyrics to songs. So whenever I get a chance to work with with musicians, I I try to do it. Um, okay, so there's the music, and I also have recently directed uh, films. I've done two films, um, and the second one is now showing in Bangkok. I think today is maybe the last day, actually. Um, it's called Someone From Nowhere. My first film was called Motel Mist. It came out in 2016. And this new one just came out last month. Uh, it, it was premiered last year in Tokyo, but it came out in, in Thailand last month. And we have um, the trailer for the film for you to see.
So this film will be shown at the Asiatica Film Festival in Roma um, on October 6th or 7th, 6th, yes. So if you're interested or if you're in Rome, um, you can check it out. I will be there also to, to present the film. It's a two-character uh, two, two film, meaning the whole film is just, it has two characters. <laughs> Uh, talking and they are fighting over who owns this space, the, the apartment. Um, people tend to see it as a political film because it's about ownership and uh, reclaiming of memories and things like that. It gets uh, surreal a little bit towards the end, but um, yeah, but that's, that's my latest uh, film and um, I, I have a latest novel that came out um, at the beginning of the, the year and when I go back to Thailand in October there will be a big book fair in Bangkok and I will have uh, my latest collection of short stories with five stories. So um, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, <laughs> there, there are a lot of things that I do and not, not enough time to really talk about them all or explain them all. Um, when I was told that this uh, session or this uh, creative morning theme is chaos, um, my immediate uh, thought was to add the word emptiness to it. So it's the chaos of emptiness. Because, you know, af after everything, like after all these things that I do, I still don't really know who I am or what, why I'm doing <laughs> these things, why I'm doing so many things. Um, but I think maybe that's the, that's the joy of it or that's the inspiration that I get from it is to keep exploring and to collaborate with as many talented people as as I can, uh, same as being here and having this book in, it, in Italy is uh, something completely unexpected but also a very um, touching experience for me and also, I'm here, I'm meeting a lot of people that have similar interests and I feel that this is what, uh, what keeps me going is to meet people and with potential to collaborate or even to share conversations that um, build on the things that I already think about or give me opportunities to explore more ideas and, and to see the world from different views. Um, and I'm very happy to be here today. This is the first morning anything that I've done. I'm not a morning person, so this is way early for me, but it's a very happy um, time to have breakfast and to, to, to be presenting my work to you all. Thank you very much.